Hello all, Elf from Manila Visuals here and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to create a spiral staircase. You can use the method to create any staircase that you like. We're going to be going through two different ways to do that. One is a technique called Duplicate Special and the other is using a tool called Mesh. So we're going to be creating something that looks like this. If you are interested in finding out how to do that, please stick around. Cool, let's go. So I'm going to start with a new scene, file new scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is to go to my preferences and change my working units to meters. I'm going to create a center column using a cylinder and I'm going to give it a height of something like three meters and then I'm going to change the radius to 10 centimeters and what I want to do with this is actually move it up to the the ground here so I can go into my move tool and hit the D key and using V for vertex snap, I can point to, towards the bottom of the cylinder, let go, and then holding my X key, I can drag it up to the, to the grid over here. If you're using the latest version of Maya, you can actually now change the height baseline. So if you decrease that, you will see that that is now on, on the floor there. So with that on the floor, we just want to freeze the transformations here to make sure that's its home. And then if you have any history, you might as well just delete that by hitting Alt, Shift and D on your keyboard. Cool. So that's the first part. Second part is that we need uh, something to instance around our column. So I'm going to create our first step and I'm just going to eyeball this. And I'm going to move this out to the side. I think I'll leave there be a little bit of overhang here. And then I'll just do a little bit of a, a taper. Something like this. Like I said, this is not going to be a modeling tutorial. Um, but a little bit of shaping is not a bad thing. Cool. So again with this, we will want to modify, freeze the transformations and also delete the history. And the important thing that we need to do here is at the moment we have our pivot point for our step and it's currently at the center of the, the step. And we want that to be at the center of this, this column that we're rotating it around. And the easy, easiest way to do that is by hitting the D key go to pivot mode and then you can just go to the top view and then hit 4 to go into the wireframe and then using your V key holding that down to, to snap to vertex you can drag this red arrow and you want to point it towards the center vertices the center vertex sorry in this in, in that cylinder and then we can come out back to our perspective and now when we rotate this you see that it's rotating around that point. So the first method of instancing this would be um, using duplicate special. And this is something that I did in, in my time lapse video of um, the A-frame house that we're building at the moment. Um, you can see that I used the duplicate special method to do that. And the way that I did it is that I select the first step and then what you want to do is hold shift and duplicate that object and we're going to get it to a position where we are happy so if I translate it in Y by 0.2 and then give it a bit of a rotation until I'm happy with where it's sitting so I think let's just go for 30 Okay, and we're sort of using this as a as a guide because now we know that we need to move each step up 
and around. So each step up by 0.2 and we need to rotate it around y by 30 degrees. So once we know that, we can select our original step and go up to edit, down to duplicate special and go to the options. And I'm just going to reset my settings here. And we want each step to be an instance just in case we want to make any changes. And then what we want to do is input the values in here. So we've got X, Y, Z. So in Y we want 0.2 and then rotate Y we want 30 degrees. Number of copies. So if we wanted this to do a full sort of 360 degrees, we would need to divide 360 by 30, which gives us 12, if my maths is correct. So we're going to say number of copies 11, because we've got the, the first one plus 11 and that's 12. So once we've done that we can hit apply and now you can see that you've got a full rotation and obviously you can come in and if you need to come back and change this number you can come come and just control set that undo it and then come in and um, change this number and reapply. So Let's just leave that where it is and delete the second cube in there because we don't need that. Because it's um, because we selected it to be an instance, what that means is actually if we go into vertex mode now, you'll see that when I highlight the original vertices for this cube, it then highlights all, all of the others. And when I make a change, it makes a change and updates all of the others too. So that's really cool. You know, that's that's a really nice way to be able to affect all of your instances in, in the same chain. And that is one way of doing it. But what I'm proposing is that you might want to use MASH to do these sorts of jobs. And the reason for that is because we just have a bit more control. We are able to um, we are able to do a few more things and direct it a, a bit more um, thoroughly. So in order to get this working in MASH, because we've already got our pivot set correctly, we all we need to do is go up to MASH. And if you can't see MASH up here, you just need to make sure that it's enabled in your plugin manager. So if you type MASH, you should have this plugin enabled. And once you do under your animation menu set, you you should see mash up here. And if we go to the options box, what we're going to do is we're going to choose this linear type and it's going to be an instance and we're going to hit apply. And then if we select the mash node over in our outliner and hit control A to open up your attribute editor, we're going to go along to the distribute tab and this is where we can change the direction. So at the moment it's it's instancing along X. So we don't want that. And we want to increase it in Y. So remember that number that we put in for the column earlier. Well, if we put the same number in here, we know that that is going to be three meters. And to get this spinning around like we had before with the duplicate special, if we just increase this rotate Y value, you can see that you've now got your spiral staircase. But the great thing about this is that we can now increase this number for more steps or take, you know, take the number away for less steps. And it makes it really nice and easy to add and take things away as, as you need to and also increase or decrease distance, etc. So I think this, this is a really nice way to be able to do um, things like staircases. But it's not just, you know, you don't just have to limit it to the steps. Let's actually go and create the railings. So let's create cylinder. And I'm just, again, eyeballing this a bit. If I was um, 
doing this for real, I would be inputting um, dimensions, but just for the sort of speed of the, the tutorial. Okay, so this is going to be my railing. And as I was saying, everything that we do in MASH needs to be based around this world center point. And um, obviously we want this railing to be um, pivoting around that point. So we're going to just do what we did earlier when we go to the top view. And we're going to hit D to go into pivot mode. And then we are going to vertex snap with V and point at the middle of this cylinder. Go back to perspective mode. And let's freeze the transformations. Delete the history. Just make sure I'm in object mode. Oh, it's help if I click the right keys. <laughs> um, okay, so now this should be rotating around our center column. And we're not going to use the same mesh network for this. We'll actually add another one. It's exact the same principles apply. Take out the distance x and put your number in here for, for three meters. And then if we use rotate y, put that to 360. As long as your number is the same, which is obvious, mine is not. So let's just go back to my first network. I have 12 steps. And in my second mesh network for the railings, I only have 10. So if I increase that to 12, you see that they are now matching up. Cool. And let's just finish this off by actually doing the, the handrail here as well. So in order to do that, what we can utilize is the center, the top center vertices from, from these cylinders. But we can't actually select these because at the moment they're just instances. So in order to be able to select these, we need to switch the geometry type and we can do that in MASH. So if we select the, the, the network with the, with the rails and we go up to MASH, down to Editor, what we can do in here is if you go to the little notepad and go down to switch mesh geometry type what you should notice now is in your outline you now have a repro mesh and it's basically taken all the instances and it's combined it into one uber mesh and what that means for us now is that we can actually come in and and use you know use these points and we're going to use them to snap a curve to. So the curve we're going to use is the EP curve tool and it's important that we use this one because the others, um, so the CV curve tool is, is more of an interpolation where the EP curve tool will actually stick to those points. So I'm going to wireframe on shaded here so I can actually see where I'm snapping to. And I'm gonna hold the V key and then I'm just going to click on that center point up there. And I'm going to do that on each one of these railings. So I'll probably just speed this bit up for you guys. And when you've made your last click, if you hit the enter key, you'll have your your curve. And then we're going to use the sweep mesh tool, which is fairly new. It's been in um, since Maya 2022, so hopefully you're using that version. 
If you're using an earlier version, then you could extrude um, a set of edges along this curve. Um, but but we because we now have this sweet mesh tool, it's a it's a really handy way to, for us to do it. Though this obviously does not look like what we want it to. So um, but that's fine. It's a starting point. So when you've swept the mesh along the curve, if you come over to um, your sweep profiles and we're going to use the rectangle profile and then we can actually input some dimensions here so I think our values are probably going to be quite low for for the handrail so I'm just going to get that down to a position a bit closer we might even need 0 0.0 so we might go 0 0.06 0 0.02 and that's getting somewhere a bit closer. The reason that it's looking so weird is because it's it's only got a certain amount of subdivision. So we, we can increase that by using this precision slider. And when we increase that, you should see it start to pop along that curve. And I would just sort of be a bit cautious with this and going to 100 here because um, the higher you increase this, the more subdivisions you're going to get. And your system might be absolutely fine with that, but you might be using the, the sweep mesh tool on a, a, you know, a very complex curve or, or something with a lot of points. And um, yeah, you can also use the optimize button, um, which essentially will, if you have lots of points in, in a certain area of the curve, it will put more subdivisions in that area and less in the other areas. So I'm not going to use it for this example. And what I want to do with the handrails, just give it a bit of a bevel and we can use the corner radius. But again, with this, I think we're going to need to be quite low with our value. So let's try 0 0.001. And this is all to do with your scene scale. So if you're working at a different scene scale, your values actually might be a bit different to these. Okay, something like that's cool. And then you can you can uh, put a cap on the end. And if this were a modeling tutorial, I would be coming in here and cleaning up this topology a little bit. Um, but also the beauty about doing things with, a, with um, the sweep mesh tool is that is also procedural so we can actually come in and affect the shape here if we make changes to the original mesh networks with the steps or the railings and we need to make sure that the, um, the handrail is following it then we can still go in and change those things if you found that useful in any way, please hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with any of our future releases and we will see you for the next one. Cheers.